Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, admin evangelist, and this is How I Solved It. Have you ever been in a situation where you're using email to case and you get caught in a loop where an automated response from a customer quickly creates hundreds or even more case records? In today's episode, check out how Christina Nava used a flow in a custom setting to allow her support reps to put a stop to the auto emails and infinite new case loop using email to case. Today, I'm joined by Christina Nava, Senior Salesforce Administrator. Welcome to How I Solved It, Christina. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. This is really exciting for me. Now, I know your first interaction with Salesforce was over 10 years ago as an end user. Can you share with us your Salesforce journey? Absolutely. So in 2011, I was working with Salesforce at Salesforce as an end user, became the director of tech support for that company, and like a lot of people, became the accidental admin. We were too small. We didn't have a full-time admin, and we needed someone to just do the little things that, that come along. So I started creating fields, creating formulas, and it was something that I really enjoyed. It was right at my alley. It was solving problems. It was using technology to make those puzzle pieces fit, and I really enjoyed it. So in 2019, I made the leap. I decided to make Salesforce my full-time career, and I started working for a Salesforce partner and became a consultant, and I just really enjoyed it at that time. So when you were a Salesforce consultant, how did you relate back to your admin roots? So as a consultant, you're talking with your client, you are trying to figure out exactly what they do and how to make Salesforce really work for them. but. If you have not been an admin before, you haven't been that end user, you kind of have all these puzzle pieces, but you don't necessarily have that last thing of how do I make it work best? Mm -hmm. Unless you've been in the shoes of that end user or that admin, you don't always think about how is this going to work best for them? How are they going to be able to maintain it long term? You know, those clicks that they get from point A to point B. So I honestly think that being that end user and having used it from that point of view, being an admin and having to maintain it really helped me be able to put all of those pieces together into that picture that really worked best for them. That sounds so great. Share with us the business problem you're trying to solve regarding email to case. Absolutely. So this is something that really, really has been affecting me and my users for years now. So the problem is that with email to case, of course, everybody knows that you set up, say, support at mycompany.com. When someone sends an email to that email address, you have a forwarding set up. And so it forwards to Salesforce and it automatically creates the case, which is great. So your next thing after that is you want to send an email back to the client saying, hey, we got it. Everything is great. You know, here's your your case number if you need to contact us again. And again, that works perfectly 99.9% of the time. The issue comes up is when either they have an out of office email that sends back. So it doesn't reply back to your email because reply backs automatically get associated with your case and everything's great. But if a brand new email is sent, well, Salesforce sees that as a brand new email, which creates a case, which sends the new case email, which sends a new out of office email. And so you end up having this infinite loop of cases being sent. And up until now, the only way I knew to break it was to actually stop sending the email from our point of view. Um, And it's pain because if I'm not at my desk, if they don't see it quickly, if it happens overnight and you're not a 24-hour shop, you can have thousands of cases get created. You can have anywhere from, you know, two to 10 created a minute. And so every minute you are delaying turning that off, it is a problem. And so... I really racked my brain for years, honestly, over a way to solve this. And it wasn't until I learned about custom settings that I had that aha moment. Mm -hmm. That light bulb went off. That light bulb went off. It's like, oh, so I can actually have a custom setting control whether this email gets sent or not. That's great. Oh, wait a minute. You have to be an admin to turn that custom setting on and off. So then, you know, sit down and think, 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 how can I have an end user do this? And that's where I came up with a screen flow that can allow an end user 
to turn that custom setting on and off. And that's how I came up with my solution. So I'm excited to see your solution. Christina, show us how you built it. Absolutely. So the first thing I'm going to do is as the end user, I'm going to walk you through what they would do. And then I'm going to show you how I built it. So just like with the cooking show, I have this pre-created for you already. So as the end user, I'm working in the open cases queue and I start seeing a lot of cases come through. And this is really obvious because you'll see the first one. In that case, we have test three here. And then we see support case number and then that same subject line and then another one and then another one. And so all of a sudden, I know that we have an infinite loop of cases being created. So because my Salesforce admin has created this for me, I'm now empowered to go in and stop this before it gets out of control. So I can go to my home screen and on my home screen, I see a screen flow and we can see that the send new case email is currently sent, set to send. So I can just toggle this off and hit next. And it's just letting me know that this has been completed and I hit finish. So this screen flow, this toggle is actually showing you the current setting. So again, as this end user, I can see that we are now set to don't send. So if I go back to my open queue and I refresh, I could see that, oh, thank goodness, this infinite case loop has been stopped. So we have been able to empower our end users to stop this before it gets out of control. After 60 to 90 seconds, we need to make sure that we stop sending the email, they've stopped receiving it and sending that either out of office or, you know, I've seen this with IT tickets. So we send it to an IT at company.com and they send it, oh, we've created a ticket for you. That creates it too. So we need to give it that 60 to 90 seconds and then we can go back in and just toggle it back on and hit finish. So that's how our end users can do this. Now, this solution was created with a custom field on the user object, a custom setting, and two separate flows. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the custom field on the user record. This is a very simple checkbox. And the only thing we're using this for is to make sure that we are allowing only certain users to toggle this on and off. You don't want just anybody to be able to do this because what if they forget to turn it back on? If this is not turned on, that new case created email is never going to go out to your users and that can really cause some problems. So we want to be able to determine who can do this. Now we can do this with either, like I said, this checkbox on this user account, or you can do it with a custom permission. Either one is going to work. We just need to be able to way to check a way to check to be able to see, do they have permission to do this? So very simple, new case override checkbox on the user object. Then if we can go to an actual user and we'll see this new case email override checkbox, we can edit the user and set it to true. So that's all this is for is checking that they have the proper permission. So the second thing we're going to do to kind of set all of this up is we're going to create a custom setting. So our custom setting is called automation switches. Now notice this isn't called what I have, you're gonna see in a moment, you know, case enable new case email. We're making this fairly generic because you're gonna be able to use this custom setting in all of your flows. Say you have a flow that needs to run and do something else, but you don't want it to run in certain timeframes, instead of activating or deactivating that flow, you can come into your automation switches and as the admin, you can turn it on and off here instead. So what we're doing is we created just a custom setting called automation switches. From there, we go in and we click on manage and we create a new field in there called case enable new case email, which again is a checkbox. So I want to show you what happens when I run this flow as the end user. Notice we are set to true. I'm going to turn it back off and come back to my custom setting and refresh my screen. And now this is set to false. So that is what that screen flow is doing. All it is doing is setting this field 
on our custom setting automation switches to true or false. So let's go back and turn it back on. So this is our prep work. The prep work is we have the checkbox on the user object, and then we have a checkbox on a new custom setting. From there, we have two flows. The first flow is the one that actually sends that new case email. Now, obviously mine is very simple here. You're probably not just going to have one decision to send or not send, but for the sake of this um, demo, we're keeping it very simple. So this is a very simple record triggered flow when a case is created. So when a case is created, we're going to send this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a get on that automation switches custom object. So we're going to get this automation switches object because that's what we created with that custom setting. And we're going to say, just get the first record. Now from there, because we have chosen to store all of the fields, we're able to do a decision and we're able to look at that case enable new case email field on that automation switches object we just gathered. So we're going to say if that equals true and if the email address on our case is not null, you know, we don't want to send it in case it's null, but this is the main part right here. If that case enable new case email is true, if that happens, then yes, we're going to send it. If it's not true, we just do our default outcome, whatever it happens to be. So again, this is where we are saying in this screen flow right here, this true or false is what this decision element is based on. If it's turned off, we don't send the email. If it's turned on, we do. So we had to edit our new case email flow to look at that new custom setting. So this determines whether it's sent or not. Our second flow is a screen flow. And this is where we are, we are allowing the end user to actually set the field. So this is a screen flow. The first thing we're doing in this screen flow is we have a decision element where we're saying, hey, does the user running this screen flow have permission to do this? And that is where that custom field on the user object comes into play. If this is set to true, we allow them to do all of this. If it is set to false, we are actually giving them a message that, hey, you can't do this. We don't want it to just end because then they'll never know what happened or why this isn't happening. We want to tell them why, especially because in this specific instance, this is time sensitive. Every minute we wait, we have another five to 10 cases being created. Time is of the essence. So we need to let them know, hey, you can't do this. Go talk to someone who can. But if they can do that, we are going to do the same get we did in the send the email. We're going to do a get on the automation switches object. Then we're going to show them a screen. So this first one, just simply telling them what it's doing, but the next one is a toggle. The reason why we did the get before we did this screen is because we want this toggle here to show the current value of that case, enable new case email switch. If we left this value off here, this was just always default default to on or off, however it happens to be, but we want it to show the current value. So this is really important here. If you're doing this yourself, make sure you go into this value on the toggle component and set the value to the current setting or current value of this flag. From there, we just do an assignment and we say on the automation switches, case enable new case email, make it equal to the value of that toggle. So if they toggled off, this is now false. They toggled it on, this is now true. So just set it equal to that and update your automation switches. So we're gonna update it. And since we've already set it in the previous 
element. We don't have to do anything in here other than say, update the record. Then we just have a very simple confirmation screen. We don't want them wondering what happened. We do want to tell them, hey, you're good to go now and to change it back if necessary. I can't stress the important of that, importance of that enough. If you're doing this in your production, you need to train your end users that if they turn it off, they must turn it back on. And that's all there is to it. Once you activate this, you're going to want to go to the home screen of whatever app and install your screen flow as just a component somewhere on here. Then that this will give them the ability to toggle this on and off. That's brilliant. Thank you, Christina, for showing us your solution of how to break the never ending cycle of a new case creation due to automated email responses. You're very welcome. You just saw how Christina Nava solved an infinite new case creation loop caused by a customer's automated email response to email to case with a flow and a custom setting. Pretty creative if you ask me. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome Admin!